Joining us now in Studio B, the radio voice of the Cougars, the cool Canadian, and the man that is behind the mic with Greg Rebell, Greg Rebell. Nice well, to have you back. What up, Greg? Hello, boys. So a 1983 Holiday Bowl coming up on AFR. You mentioned Steve Young caught a touchdown pass. Who threw it? Eddie, Eddie Stinnett. Running back Eddie Stinnett. You know, and and the pass gets just above the defender's fingertips. I mean, it's just a swipe for the pick, and Steve ends up galloping in, takes a hit at the goal line. One of the, it's an iconic play. Oh, uh, what iconic! A, what play. a terrible play call in the red zone. <laughs> at the end of a game, a halfback toss. If yeah. it works, if it works, it can't it be was terrible. A, it's crazy. Okay, what a crazy play call. Well, Gordon Hudson went on record and was that's like, "That's a crazy play call." I remember, I remember when that play went in, thinking, "What are we doing?" And then after it happened, like, yes. oh, it was a, that was a great play it's call." Just, it's just so wild. Is it, like, it, is, it's so is, it, is it Boise State Statue of Liberty crazy in the red zone? I mean, you know, it's a, it's totally it, it, crazy. If, if yeah. a great play works, it's a great play. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. the high knee celebration to go that with. That just feel that just feels so like rushed. Like, uh, halfback toss. We'll just throw it up. <laughs> oh, man. Fantastic play. Uh, Greg, you're off and running with uh, Behind the Mic. Yeah. Had, had a solid show the first week. We really enjoyed it. Uh, what's Most the... of the guests were pretty good there, I thought. Yeah, most of them. <laughs> what's the IMDb feedback after one week? I don't think I have that. <laughs> uh, but we'll I get to that. I get Twitter feedback, and they're generally nice to me, so I don't know what I can take from that. People people didn't tweet to say it was terrible, so that, that's positive. That yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, a lot of podcast hits. It shot us into the iTunes Top 100 the next day yeah, after baby. the show, and so those are the kind of things you look at. So people are tuning in and hopefully liking what they hear. We are, we're off to a solid start with you as our first guest last week. Tonight, Blaine Fowler kicks off the show. So we'll have Blaine Fowler, uh, Dave Rose's new assistant, Slash old coaching buddy, Heath Schroyer, will be on. We'll talk. He's had a, a very interesting coaching career. We'll talk about his life and coaching career. And then uh, Brady Papingo will join us from uh, from out in L.A., I think. You and, get a chance, uh, ask Blaine about his story from the 1983 Holiday Bowl and what in the world he had to go through on that night. It's unbelievable. Also, if I give you a Sacagawea dollar, will you ask Brady Papingo about Luke Staley? <laughs> I, I, I think that's not going to come up tonight. <laughs> I think I'm going other directions. I know. Today. I, we, well, yeah. we didn't want it to come up either. Uh, yeah, that was fun. The, the transition. The West Coast Conference schedule came out for men's hoops. What do you think of it? Well, you know, since it is the second year of the uh, 18 game, nine week, no buy setup because of, uh, you know, where it starts in the calendar. And a lot of it has to do with uh, really just the calendar and, and not wanting to play pre Christmas games and still needing to get into your conference tournament in the first weekend of March. You're kind of locked into this, at least for this year, and things may change going forward. Uh, that being said, uh, of the nine weekends that they'll play, there are only three home away splits. So I think, you know, if you've got six weekends, either home, home, or away, away, it's pretty normal. And, and so three home away splits, not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. So I think all things considered, and everyone, by the end of it all, everyone's played their nine home and their nine away in one stretch or another. And BYU has, I think, at, uh, at, at any one point, only one sequence of three games, either home, and they, they have three away at one point. Mm -hmm. Everything else is either one or two game uh, stints of home or away games. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty content with it. And, uh Again, for everybody, the, the challenges are different in terms of how you get to 9 and 9, but everyone gets there. Uh, not too many complaints. I, I what, what did Dave say about it, by the way? He likes the balance. He, he liked, brought up the balance with, the, balance with the three home weekends, the three road weekends, and then the three yeah. home road splits. I, th I thought it worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. And last year it was five home road splits, and it created a situation, too, for the fans where they couldn't necessarily go out on the road and see two games. They could just see the one game. So, yeah, I like it, too. I guess I don't understand the complexity of this. Like in the Mountain it, West, it was like, we, yeah, maybe it has to do with the time. It was explained to me last it. year, but uh, uh, with, with the number of teams you've got and the fact that the TV partners are weighing in on when they want to see the, the St. Mary's Gonzaga BYU games, mm -hmm. it really does kind of hamstring you a little bit. You can't just say we're going to go nine this way, nine the next way, TV deal with it. That's not how the league is operated with right. the TV partners. Yeah, especially when you're the West Coast Conference and you're like, hey, we'll – and I think BYU St. Mary's is on December 30th for that exact reason. Probably a good TV spot. Although, isn't that the day of the college football playoff? Is it? Are mm -hmm. we on New Year's Eve or an, what? It, like BYU fans are going to watch, but from a TV standpoint, that's a little challenging. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that. That's probably the the thing I like least about. Unless the BYU, but unless BYU's in that playoff game, they'll be watching the game they want to watch. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you, I mean, do you dislike the game on December 30th because the students are away? No, I mean, everybody's going to be faced with the prospect of playing some games without students in. And, and uh, some schools start later into January, and, and, and so they students miss more games at, at other schools than, than, than BYU. It's going to happen. Uh, yeah, you'd like the students to be there uh, for St. Mary's at BYU December 30th, but I have a sense that the fans are still going to find a way to fill that building even with the students out. It's not going to yeah. be crickets in the Marriott Center on December 30th. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a good environment. It's going to be a good environment <laughs> with a lot of people uh, to watch the Cougars and Gales. So, yeah, I mean, perfect world. The students are there, but everyone faces some games. And uh, I think last was it last year? Uh, somebody made a similar complaint about we've got either St. Mary's or BYU in our building and the students aren't there. It happens to everybody every year. Yeah, yeah. BYU just has the, the largest by far uh, number of students, so that's why it's a little weird. But January 1st is the day for college football playoff this year. So there you go. No concerns. No, no problem then. Yeah, and like Greg said, there's Put probably on the blue no blue goggles, Jerem. Sweet, <laughs> yes. St. Mary's BYU December 30th. Cannot wait. And yeah, we are obviously stoked about BYU football just 17 days away from Portland State, which kind of feels just crazy. I mean, about two weeks into fall camp, what do you feel like you know about this team that you didn't when camp started? I suspected the wide receiver group would prove to be. Uh, better than people might have anticipated just, just for lack of name recognition. And they've shown that, I think, through the first couple of weeks. Um, and, and I think metrics would show that that group is a pretty solid group at the top five or six right now. So uh, we, we may not have known it. We might have suspected it. And I think we've seen it. But that guy in particular uh, leads a pretty strong group. Uh, I think the are gonna we be will good. hear from And that's the up. thing, too. I, uh, Talon, not, not that it's a huge surprise, but – Kind of a nagging type of couple of seasons with him. With some, he never really was able to break out. I think a lot of it was just kind of some health issues that never really, really remedied themselves to 100. percent Now he's fully back, and I, and I wondered coming into camp, can he really, um, you know, go 100 percent and be all out? And and he's been great. He's been tremendous. I, I think Talon's been uh, you know, maybe the best. Why? And that guy too, right there. Those two guys might be, you know, running close to one and two in terms of who's impressed most: the Talon Shumway and 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 Bo Tanner uh, at, at the wideout. Neil Pau, yeah, Butch's older or younger brother, he's he, right there he too. Is, he is getting some run, uh, yeah, as a guy that's you maybe not have heard of. Yeah, it's, it's not unusual when you see the guys uh, come out for eleven on eleven ones versus one stuff that he gets first team reps. Uh, he's six four, uh, has a lot of innate ability, a lot of things that you uh, that as they say don't necessarily coach a kid that just kind of comes naturally to him and has caught a lot of balls. Doesn't let it hit, let, let hit the ground very often, and so. Again, uh, you always know someone's going to emer emerge from camp that you didn't expect, and he's one of the candidates right now. And, uh, you know, you put Neil with Bo Tanner and Talon Shumway and Alevi Hifo and, and Micah Simon, and you've got five guys who've played well before you even get to a guy like Jonah Trinneman, who everyone knows. Yeah, between Neil and Talon Shumway, Ben Cahoon told us yesterday, they have combined for one meaningful drop. Yeah. I mean, they just don't drop the it's ball. It's Ben Cahoon-like. Yeah. And, and his metrics, uh, I mean, it's really, really intricate day by day on how they're being tracked. And they're all mindful of where they stand every day of camp yeah. on the different metrics. It's six, seven, eight categories. And some matter more than most. But the one that matters most is do you catch the ball? And that's where those guys are really excelling. Yeah, we'll go two-on-one -on -one with uh, Ben Cahoon tomorrow, the wide receivers coach, coming up in just a bit on BYU Sports Nation, two-on-one -on -one with Talon Shumway. Let's uh, go back to one of our favorite traditions. And we need to do this before you head off to Norman, Oklahoma, so that we have something to chew on while, while you're gone on your Yeah, leaving town in the morning. Yep. Okay. A cool thing about Canada that we can uh, chew on for a little bit. Well, and this one's uh, rather common knowledge, but I do it because Dave Rose was in this seat right before me today. It's a basketball-themed uh, moment. Uh, the inventor of basketball is James Naismith, Dr. James Naismith, Canadian. Yes. Born in Almont, Ontario, just south of Ottawa. And, of course, uh, you know, before there was Bill Self and Roy Williams and others and Fog Allen, he also coached Kansas uh, basketball back in the day. But, uh, yeah, Dr. James Naismith, Canadian, and invented the game of basketball, wrote the first, first rule book, and was the coach of Kansas basketball in the, uh, back in the 19th century. What a significant contribution. Why isn't Canada better at basketball then? <laughs> The actually, dude admitted it. We're, we're getting better. And and once all of our top Eat guys and then... decide to play at the same time and not take stuff off, we're going to be really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like it. I can't name a Canadian basketball player besides Steve Nash. You, what do you mean? Kelly Olenek is no one to you? Oh, yeah, that guy. Wiggins? Oh, Andrew Wiggins, oh. man. Okay, Let's we're, go. We're, up to, we're, we're up to three. Tr Tristan Thompson? He barely played in Brady the playoffs. <laughs> If Brady has that nice Tom Baylor, 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 Baylor the, gunner, the gunner yeah. from Baylor, Baylor man. dude. Yeah. Brady has that guy could shoot the yeah. ball. If Bill Walton was here, he'd say, Canada basketball, please. <laughs>
is there a better three-point shooter than Brady Hessler? <laughs> 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 if Brandon Davies would have made that three, 